Welcome back to Apex Instruments. In this video, we're going to show you how to audit a digital pressure transducer connected to a red line process meter, a procedure the EPA also refers to as a calibration check in the documentation. A transducer audit is a quick and painless process as long as you have the right equipment. The equipment that you're going to need is a console with a transducer and a red line process meter, a reference manometer, digital or liquid, a pressure source, such as a precision hand pump, and materials for establishing a leak-free connection between your equipment. If you need help getting your hands on the right tools, contact a sales representative at Apex Instruments and ask about our transducer audit kit. Now, before we do the actual audit, here are some special considerations for you to think about. And if you want to jump straight to the audit, click the link on the screen. Your standards and procedures may vary depending on your physical location, method regulations, or range of transducer. Today we're going to use method 2 procedure standards on a 2 inches of water range transducer as our ongoing example. While this procedure may apply to many methods, it doesn't apply to every method, and we highly recommend that you check the literature for your specific method to perform the correct audit procedure using the techniques you learn in this video. Our pressure transducers are bi-directional, which means when working with it, make sure you treat each positive and negative range as independent transducers and perform calibration checks on each direction of the ports. It's important to understand that temperature and wind greatly affect the pressure reading process. For example, when the equipment warms up when it's exposed to warm air or hand contact, or when wind blows on open ports, the pressure reading will change. To compensate for this, we recommend that you wait for your console to warm up, limit hand contact with the equipment during the audit, and protect open ports from both natural and artificial wind during the audit. For a method 2 transducer audit, you're going to have to perform the calibration checks after the test on each port at three or more points that represent the range of stack velocity. We recommend that you use one point at least to represent the low range, one point to represent the mid-range, and one point to represent the high range of your stack velocity. Let us assume that our stack velocity range today is 0.5 to 1.5 inches of water. Begin by connecting your hand pump, your reference meter, and your quick connect using the connecting materials. It should look like this when you're done. If at this point you need to perform a zero, attach the quick connect to a, the delta P positive port and use the precision hand pump to release the pressure and then adjust the pressure in the system until the certified reference manometer indicates zero. You can also remove the quick connect, which will also create a zero pressure environment. Once you're at zero, Check your delta P display on the console to see if its value is within 0.03 inches of water. If so, then the drift has passed. To reset the zero position, press the reset button. Begin with the delta P positive. The first thing to do is a leak check. Use the pump to pressurize the system to 75% of your transducer's measuring range, which for us is 1.5 inches of water. Then, allow the system to sit there untouched and uninterrupted for 15 seconds. If the pressure has not changed by 0.1 inches of water, then your leak check has passed. Now, we need to perform a calibration check at the lower end of our range, 0.5 inches of water. Use the precision hand pump to pressurize the system until the reading on the reference digital manometer indicates 0.5 inches of water. Once your reference manometer reads 0.5, check your delta P display on the process meter to see if its value is within 5% of the measuring point. 
which is 0 0.025 inches of water. If so, then this calibration checkpoint has passed. Perform the calibration check at mid-range of your stack velocity. In our example, our mid-range is around 1 inch of water, and the tolerance would be 0 0.05 inches of water. Again, 5% of the measuring point. If the checkpoint passes, perform the same procedure at the high end of the velocity range. In our example, the high range is 1.5 inches of water, and the tolerance would be 0 0.075 inches of water. If the checkpoint passes, switch the connection on the reference meter from the positive port to the negative port. Perform the same leak check and calibration checks as you did on the positive side. If the leak check and three calibration checkpoints pass, then you are finished with the delta P positive port. Disconnect the line from the delta P positive and connect to the delta P negative. Perform the same two leak checks and six calibration checkpoints on the delta P negative port. If they all pass, then it's time to audit delta H. Disconnect the line from delta P negative, switch your connection ending, and attach it to the delta H positive, which is the impact pressure line in the back of the console, or the line that is the closest to your dry gas meter outport. Also, keep in mind that you have to rotate the valve so that the line to the dry gas meter is closed and the lines to the transducer and reference meter are open. Once you're connected, perform the same two leak checks and six calibration checkpoints on the delta H positive, then the delta H negative ports. If they all pass, then congratulations, your audit is successful. If any of your calibration checkpoints do not pass, immediately move on to the calibration procedure for your transducer, which we teach you how to do in the next video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.